Namaste, everyone. This is Michelle Skoleski Boyd. Now, there are a few of you I know who are just getting to know me, so I just want to briefly share that I am an intuitive empath and a transpersonal hypnotherapist. My job is to help guide you to a place where you can confidently raise your frequency. And the purpose of this course is to allow that to happen by calling in the assistance of your angels. So welcome, everyone. I'm very honored to have so many joining the call, and I welcome all those who are listening into the recording. And because time and space are merely illusions, your energies are also here in this moment. I really trust that you're open to receiving the energies today. So I'd like for everyone to begin by taking a nice big breath. And as we begin, some of you may want to listen to the first portion of this call with a notebook and a pen. We're going to go about 90 minutes. So if it feels right for you to doodle or to take some notes to help you stay focused on the words a little more, I'm totally okay with that. I'm deliberately beginning the course by speaking to your logical mind so that it can align nice and perfectly. And then when the time is right, we'll be closing our eyes opening ourselves to intuition and and inviting the angels to connect. So most important, it's important that you be fully present, fully be here in every way by creating a sacred space whereby you can get a feel for my energy, a feel for your own intentions to be able to go within as the time is right And so obviously it's important that you be in a safe space, not multitasking, not driving. It's also about following your own intuition, your own free will. So I'm teaching this course in a way that aligns with my truth. So be sure to stay aligned with yours. Be aligned with what feels good to you. For example... If I use the word angel, but you prefer archangel instead, then go with what feels good to you. If I ask you to picture something that is green, but your intuition is saying yellow, go with your truth. Trust that it holds special and deep meaning for you. So during our time together, we're going to be discussing just a little bit about my background We'll be talking about the order of angels and how they came about. Since I love words, we're going to be defining angel and the many different ways to communicate with your angels. And then I'll be offering a few angel messages to some random callers, trusting that this will help attune the entire group so that each of you can deepen your experience, allowing you to connect with your angels on your own in love and light with a little bit of guidance from me. Now, because we all have free will, though you might have heard this before, I need to say it again. Your angels cannot assist without your permission. Now, some of you are hurting. Some of you have been angry because you've experienced a death or a loss or major significant changes, and you have pushed your angels away. Because of free will, they're not able to connect. Some of you have gotten very angry, and I know from experience what this is like. I know what it's like to get so angry and so upset that you just say, piss on the world, and you push everyone that you love away. Even your guardian angel who's with you from birth until death must step back. So if you're feeling disconnected, it may be that you lost complete hope and you pushed your angel completely away. So with very few exceptions, your angels can intervene. So please, take a moment and ask yourself if you're really ready to connect, really ready to open yourself 
allowing your free will to lead the way, to connect with goodness, love, and light. That's the space that we're creating. I know many of you are here because you're in transition. Some of you are stuck and are losing hope. Some of you have a desire to change. Others of you are more curious about the nature of angels, while many of you, you really just wish to strengthen your awareness of them. So I welcome each and every one of you, and no matter where you are or what you're going through, your angels are with you, waiting to assist you. My first encounter with an angel was when I was four. I was undergoing surgery, and because I was so small, my legs and my feet were tied to the bed, and my forehead was strapped down as well. I remember falling asleep, and as I fell asleep, I remember just sensing and feeling this magnificent, brilliant beam of light. And as I was falling asleep, I was really led into the arms of an angel, and this angel guided my way and led me into these beautiful, beautiful energies that I cannot even describe or put into words. I simply just remember that joyous feeling, that feeling of safety. It was a brilliant beam of light, and I could feel myself flying upward into a magical place. And I continued to return there in vibration many times throughout my childhood. And I say this because after today, you'll feel the vibration, the memory, that that feeling it's it's always a feeling your your energy never lies you're you're going to it's just your truth we all have a truth barometer and i was able to return there throughout my childhood and by the time i was 11 god source the name i give my higher power had introduced me to many more angels and ever since i've been able to sense them and feel them and hear them and some of you may already know that you can do the same There are many of you who had experiences with angels. One of my favorite books is called Angels in My Hair. It was written by an author in Ireland, Lorna Byrne. If you haven't read any of her books, I would highly recommend them. Uh, Lorna Byrne, L-O-R-N-A, last name Byrne, B as in boy, Y-R-N, like Nancy E. And she can physically see angels everywhere. She has made it a point to tell everyone that an angel walks beside every person regardless of their religion or their race. And I know that you're on this call because you trust and you know your angels exist. You may be at a point of being open to know they exist. Either way, you're open. A few years ago, I had an experience that became a published story in a magazine called Angels on Earth. And then it was republished in their uh, sister parent magazine called Guideposts. My husband and I had an encounter with a stranger that was way too synchronistic for it not to be real, could not necessarily be proven by anyone else. That's the encounters with angels. It all comes down to your faith, and it isn't connected to any one religion. The term angel can be found in three key religions, and that's actually the word angel itself. You'll find it in Uh, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, uh, these divine helpers have always been in writings. You can find it in writings from Sumeria to Babylonia to Persia to Egypt to Greece. Angels also appear in the Bible a lot. Those who have counted have said that the angels are mentioned 273 times. They're also mentioned in the Quran. Uh, A quote from the Quran is, you shall see the angels circling around the throne giving glory. So it wasn't until the late 5th to early 6th century that Christian theologian and philosopher uh, Dionysus put the angels into a hierarchical order. Many people don't realize this, uh, but it happened in the late 5th to to early 6th century. So um, Dionysus had a vision in which he saw nine orders of angels divided into three hierarchies, each of which were divided into three orders from highest to lowest. So the first hierarch in what Dionysus believed to be the highest and the closest to God consists of what's called the seraphim, the cherubim, and the thrones. Now the seraphim 
they're known for taking on fiery imagery that is often associated with the presence of God. They've been said to be the highest order of hierarchy of angels, and according to Christianity, they're the ones closest to God and described as flying directly above the throne while singing God's praises. The Old Testament speaks of the seraphim as having six wings, two covering the face, two covering the feet, and two which are used for flying. Then there's the cherubim, and they're said to be second order of God, described as the charioteers, said to be the record keepers of heaven, described as childlike. Some people uh, think of them as cupid-like. There are then the thrones, the third order of angels. Their name means wisdom or one who prays. They are known for standing next to the throne of God and serving as God's chariot. In other words, they're God's wheels, described as having four wings, four faces with a sparkle like burnished brass. Their orders come from the seraphim and the cherubim, and are, they are responsible for ensuring that our world, our cosmos, remains in order. The second sphere that Dionysus put together in the hierarchy were labeled dominations, virtues, and powers. Dominations are the fourth-ranking order of angels. They act like the middle management between the upper choir and the lower choir. According to Jewish traditions, the success or failure of nations is decided by this order. The dominations have been described as wearing long albs or gowns, reaching down to their feet, hitched with golden belts, adorned with green sole, and they carry golden staffs in the right hand and the seal of God in the left. And at other times, they may hold an orb or a scepter. The virtues have been described as the fifth ranking order of angels. They're also called the brilliant or the shining ones. They're the angels of miracles and encouragement and blessings. They're particularly involved with people struggling with their faith. They are the chief bestowers of grace and valor. They preside over the movements of the celestial bodies as well as all the events of the weather, which includes the rain and the snow and the wind and the like. The powers, known as the sixth ranking order, they've been credited as being the first order of angels created by God. It is written in Romans that the soul is subject to the powers, holding one of the most dangerous tasks. The powers are responsible for maintaining the border between heaven and earth. It is their duty to protect the world. The powers are also known as the death angels who guide our transition to heaven. Dionysus created the third sphere, and he called the third sphere the principalities, the archangels, and the angels. The principalities are said to be the seventh ranking order of angels. They are the head of the final choir watching over the mortal world, guiding and protecting the earth's nation, the cities, and the towns. The archangels, which is the eighth-ranking order, are said to be the most widely known order of angels. They aid humans. They carry God's messages. They are ultimately in command of God's armies of angels, with Archangel Michael believed to be their leader. The most common archangels believed to be standing before God, Archangels Michael, Jophiel, Shamuel, Gabriel, Raphael, Uriel, and Zadkiel. There are also others sometimes mentioned, such as Metatron and Sandalfun. There are also many more. The ninth order are angels, sometimes known as guardian angels. They are said to be the closest to humanity, responsible for watching over, protecting us, and being our companions. Now again, these nine orders were written before the year 532. The writer Dionysus came to say, that only God really knows the true organization of angels. This tells me that the nine orders were as accepted as they were and why they still are accepted as they are through the years because our minds like to think linearly. So just allow yourself for just a moment to feel what angel, what description you have brought into your belief system. What feels good? According to Webster's, an angel is defined as a spiritual being that serves, especially as a messenger from God or as a guardian of human beings. 
An angel can also be described as someone who was in this life, who was passed on, such as, my son is now in heaven, he's my little angel. Angel from the medieval Latin masculine word, angelus, is derived from the name of the heavenly creature, which itself is derived from the Greek word angelos, meaning messenger. Even Plato speaks of intermediate powers of divine order as a kind of spirit that we all receive at birth that follows us in life and after death. Angels are said to be androgynous, meaning they're really not male nor are they female, though they can take on male or female form. People who have connected to angels are described doing so in many ways. We all have different ways of receiving communication, and we have the ability to tap into all these different receiving ways, and I call, and many people in the world call these clairs. So there's clairvoyancy, clairaudiency, clairsentience, claircognizance. There are also some others, such as the sense of taste or the sense of smell, But I'm going to focus on the four that are most common, and we're going to go over these very briefly. Clairvoyancy is the ability to see. So when you're seeing an angel, it's sometimes like a movie on a screen, or sometimes you get this flash where you say, okay, I just got this flash, and I saw this angel in a long robe, and she had like blonde hair and blue eyes. So when you close your eyes sometimes, It might look like a door to another world opens. You just simply see it in your mind's eye. Um, Some of my friends who are very good um, at clairvoyancy, they look at a white wall or a blank wall, and they immediately have the image begin to present itself right on that white wall, and they can see clearly and begin to describe in detail everything that they see. So when you're doing creative work, when you're doing uh, intuitive work, Let me ask you if you get a clear image of your head in it first, or if you dream in color or with vivid images. When you close your eyes, can you clearly see an object of your choosing? Do you get a visual solution to your problems easily? Can you envision and create artistically? Do you see lights or auras around people, around plants, around animals? Do you see things moving out of the corner of your eye? These are all clairvoyancy. Clairaudience, it's the ability to hear your higher self, your angels, your spiritual team. Do you sometimes hear music playing in your head, yet you know that you're not the artist or the writer of the song? It's the same type of feeling when you get clear audience messages in your head. It's a new personality. It's not your own. It's like a song that plays in your head. Have you ever heard a voice clearly next to you? And it sounded like my voice right now outside of you, yet no one was there. That's also a form of clear audience. Some people have that ability. Some people only hear it internally. Do you hear voices upon waking or upon going to sleep? Do you wake up in the morning and feel like you heard something outside of you, such as whispering music or voices, though there was no one there? Do you get words popping into your head, just fully formed, which are very relevant to you? Do you lie in bed at night and it sounds like someone may be whispering to you through your pillow? all forms of clairaudience, all perfectly normal and natural. Clairsentience is intuition in the form of emotional input and physical feelings, those empathic, very strong, if people say you're very sensitive, you're like a sponge, you're very thin-skinned, if you have often um, been easily one to cry or to feel what other people feel. This is all clairsentience. If you've ever felt the presence of your angel in the room, if you felt the air change, a temperature change, if you feel the atmosphere change, do you get tingling sensations on your body for no apparent reason? If the hair on your arm raises, for example, or if all of a sudden your feet get really cold or you get a shiver up your spine, 
if you feel emotions and the emotions of others very deeply, you can really sense and, and, and take on what it is that they're experiencing. This is clairsentience. Do you need a lot of time alone to recharge your energetic batteries? This happens because we really are able to take on people's energies and then we need to dump them back uh, into the earth to allow them to be let go of. Uh, totally another topic, but I feel like it's important for you clairsentients to know that that's just how you're made, that's how you're built. You absorb people's energies like a sponge. It's important that you dump them out then every day. Uh, if you're standing in the shower, let it go down the drain, whatever you need to. Um, are you overly sensitive? Do you just know how someone else feels? Do you rely on your feelings as your primary source for decisions? That's all clairsentience. Claircognizance is intuition and inner knowing. It's I just know because I know. So it's information, ideas, concepts, thoughts that just come to you with a feeling of importance. just pops into your awareness, pops into your head. It may be just a gut feeling, uh, just boom, it's there. It's knowledge that flashes into your mind from seemingly out of nowhere. So for example, you may know who's on the phone without even looking at your caller ID. Uh, you may know personal things about someone that you just met. You have no idea how you know it. You just know. You just know because you know, and although you may not know why or how you know, it's important that you trust that. So people in this category tend to be in their head a lot, and because they're in their head a lot, they question and they doubt. So that's their biggest work on is, is self-doubt. They're often very analytical. They're good at understanding the abstract concepts and solving problems. So if your mind often has the final say in things, you're most likely claircognizant. Uh, if you get lots of great ideas that just pop into your head out of nowhere, uh, claircognizant. Uh, if you're good at solving problems, uh, you can size up people and just know something about them without being told. So uh, I've had clients ask me, how do I know the difference between intuition and a thought? So I just want to mention here, it's very simple. Clear cognizant information just pops in and almost always has absolutely nothing to do with what you're thinking about at the time. Okay? That's really important. I'm going to say that again. Clear cognizant information will pop into your head. It will just immediately, you know, all of a sudden you're just, you know, you're busy working and you're thinking about having a tuna sandwich and boom, you get a message from your grandma in your mind. That's clear cognizant. It has absolutely nothing to do with what you were thinking about at the time in most cases. Okay. Now, everyone has the gift of all of these different clairs. Some are more easy to access. Some of you that are claircognizant may be so in your head right now that you're asking lots of questions like, how do I know if I can connect to my angel? Uh, you're really caught up in the knowing and the understanding. You may be in your head wondering whether an angel is the same as a spirit guide or whether connecting to one order of angels is better, like is it better to connect with the archangels or the virtues? Are they more powerful than the guardian angels? So what I'll say to this is that there are really too many beliefs and too many opinions to really say that one way is the right way. It's really important that you follow your own truth. Now, some experts say that guides present the path and angels help clear the way by giving you more courage and more confidence. And some say that archangels never walk the earth, whereas angels or guides have taken human form and maybe a deceased loved one or a departed pet. Again, I encourage you to go with what feels true for you. From my experience, every person and this is the experience of Lorna Byrne as well, has one primary being, and many others, but one primary being whose energy is the most prominent. You can call it a guardian angel, a guide, an archangel, a principal protect protector. This high being of light loves you absolutely and in every way, stays with you from your birth to your death. Again, free will allows you to push it away. It's still next to you, but there's like a door between you and it. 
So light beings are always around you. Some are there to comfort you and calm you. Some may come in to help you through times of grief, to soothe you in times of pain, to deliver hope or healing or prosperity. The list can go on and on. So always, always, whenever you ask, whenever you ask an angel to assist you on your path, be it to help you to find a parking space, or to be at your best for a job interview, or when you're in school and you're taking a big exam, it's really important that you allow the feeling, that absolute feeling, to emanate. And we talked, I talked a little bit earlier about vibration and about my experience when I was four. You have that truth barometer within you. You have that feeling of love. You have that feeling of knowingness. You have a feeling of knowing, uh, of making decisions and of choosing your own path. For example, if you're asking your angels for assistance in finding a parking space, feel and act as if it had already happened and trust your angels right with you. Again, every one of us has at least one with us from birth to death. Always, 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 always. It's very important that you know this. They're with you always. They're never leaving you. They're like your shadow. They're there, okay? (laughs) They're there. They're not going away. And so, though they can abide by your wishes, wishes and you can push them away, they're still with you. They just, you won't feel them, okay? But they're always with you. So when you're asking for help, such as a parking space or whatever, just really feel it and trust it. And ask, you really only have to ask once. Let it go, and we're going to go through this when we get into the guided imagery so you can experience what I'm saying. So your angels are there to gift you with joy, with strength, with courage. They're there to uplift you to a higher place. They act like a buffer to help you soften your energies. Because let's face it, being a spiritual being, having a human experience, can sometimes feel challenging. And so they're here to help soften that experience. No matter how you picture them, no matter what you call them by name, it's up to you. And remember, your free will determines everything. So if you've been trying to connect with your angels and for some reason you cannot, it may be that you need to just call it something else. Or it may be that your own free will has gotten in the way. It's important that you be open to the energy to trust that they're always with you whenever you ask for them to be. Now, some of you wonder, do I have to like really call them in or go through some ritual? Or No. All you have to say is just open your heart and as long as you're emanating, vibrating love and light, that's what you're going to get in return. So angels, that's all you have to think or say or feel and they are there. 